I want you guys to imagine that you're in the FTX office, shaped like an F. Uh, there's a big tongue. We're in the we're in the room with a big tungsten cube. Caroline is giving a speech. She's giving a speech to the assembled team. She's assembled all the traders, all the quants, all the geniuses they have at their firm. I will be playing the part of Caroline. I will oh be the crap! Narrator. Wait, wait, wait. I need to open the script. <laughs> We're psychotic. What? Okay. I think I'll just start by saying some stuff and feel free to ask questions. M mostly, I want to say I'm sorry. This really sucks. It's really not fair to you guys. Dude, you're too good at this. <laughs> she understood that people might, wanna, might not want to stick around to help clean up whatever mess needed cleaning up, but... For people who do stick around, it's possible there's some future thing. She concluded on a hopeful note. Referring to the deal with CZ, at the time, the deal was still on the table, and FTX could have been saved. Repaying all of our creditors and making sure Alameda didn't go bankrupt is probably, like, good? Uh, yeah. Um, hey, I'm, I'm over in accounting, uh, JB. Um, can you tell us how big uh, the, the hole in the balance sheet is, please? I'd rather not. Uh, maybe I, I can help you out. I've been looking it over a little bit. Um, is it closer to the one billion mark, or is it closer to the uh, six billion mark? The uh, latter. <laughs> Whoa! After her talk, Caroline approached a female employee and said, "If you want to stay and help, I'd really appreciate it." <clears throat> yeah, uh, Caroline. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, Caroline. <laughs> um, how about you go fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so we didn't make any of that up. That's all actually quotes from what actually happened when they're shutting down the firm. And like the tale of FTX from start to finish, awkward, uncomfortable, and... Kind of funny, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think we did a good job. This is like performance art. I think we yeah. did a good job of communicating the, the stunning uh, awkwardness of that situation. Look, he's a strange dude. Yeah. I mean, in the end, it's like, again, there's sort of this like Bernie Madoff style con man, like benighted strange dude over his head. Yeah. I feel like I ended up in the, I had, Come down in the Bernie Madoff category right. when I read the indictment. Yeah. That's not really the line this book takes What's or that? your impression of it. Well, so just for starters, I mean, this, like, I think this is an important distinction. Everybody shouts at me when I make it. But Bernie Madoff, it was a Ponzi scheme. And right. it's like a definition of a Ponzi scheme. Right. There's no real business there. Right. So Sam Bankman Freed had two businesses. He had this hedge fund he called Alameda Research, but he had this crypto exchange, and the exchange was a gold mine. It generated a billion dollars in revenues in 2021, like $400 million in profits. It was real. Without, without the hedge fund there to screw it up, it'd still be there. You know, he, he, it was a casino. Right. It was just like they took little slices of every transaction in, 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 in crypto. So I think this is an important thing for his defense. I, I, I think it's, it's no coincidence that this book came out now because this is essentially the same line <clears throat> that his defense is going on right Fortuitous. which is that he was a successful businessman right he was doing six he was success experiencing success with ftx it just so happened that this hedge fund he had blew up um and i think that it's it's an interesting way to tie as this this court case which is really just about this guy to the greater fate of crypto as a whole, because what the defense is trying to say is like, oh, the legitimacy of crypto almost, right? Like crypto, if it's a legitimate business, then he didn't do anything wrong. That's kind of what they're seeming to try and build it towards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, I mean, I see that point here, and it depends on how the narratives kind of develop and are pushed. There is a risk here, I think, of them being like, eventually like, oh, crypto's a scam. This guy's a scam artist. Well, the top thing you hear about crypto stuff all the time is it's a Ponzi, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think like if if they had dug in, um, if the liquidators and stuff had dug in and found quality big business practices mm -hmm. and they hadn't found intermingling of the books and they hadn't mm -hmm. found 
actual crime outright. Um, I think that sort of defense would fly. Um, but like it, it's best case scenario negligence to a degree that is like, on, like I, I hard to even fathom. It's like negligence to, to a degree that it just wiped out, you know, $5 billion. Um, mm -hmm. And having a hedge fund that blows up, like it's, you know, it just takes one kind of invalidating movement to blow up a hedge fund, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what that hedge fund was doing it, doing and, and how it was doing it, Again, mm -hmm. you you noodle back into the vein of oh maybe it's crime you know um, you know Sam Tabasco or whatever the hell you know genius quant mm -hmm. uh, you know going around farming and dumping tokens everywhere doing the most like degenerate stuff humanly possible the biggest degen of us all like who are their LPs you know and mm -hmm. it seems like their LPs were FTX um, and. You know, I, I think when when your LP is a business that you also own or that your friends also own and you're just doing something very clearly not OK. I mean, to me, no amount of running around uh, the the issue can really solve the fact that criminal activity happened. And it's like mm -hmm. there's negligence and then there is actively doing crime and i feel like they crossed the line from negligence to actively doing crime and and maybe their crime activities were a direct result of their negligence mm -hmm. and you know this this these legal lines are very hard to maintain and cross and they were operating at a, at a scale that was very hard to manage and control but at the end of the day it was very clear everybody knew something was wrong mm -hmm. and you know, again, like I, I think the VCs and the people that that backed it and supported it and and fed us FTX. I mean, I think there needs to be some level of accountability for them, and and maybe their punishment is they just get zeroed out. You know, yeah. like oh, sorry, your investment's worthless now. Fuck you. But you know, it's like these are like the whole point of a VC is to plug an experienced businessman into mm -hmm. a rapidly growing operation so that they can, you know, help the founder scale something that they don't have the skills to scale. And obviously mm -hmm. that didn't happen, you know? Um, and it's like, you have, you know, a 16 Z Sequoia was in there, mm -hmm. like all these people, like they, they boast about, you know, how, you know, we hop on the board and we alter outcomes. We've got the, you know, the best financiers in the whole world, working for us, you know, able to build businesses unlike the, you know, you've ever seen before. And here we are seeing like SBF, you know, using QuickBooks with his girlfriend, uh, you know, while their business falls apart. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and exactly Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos, charm offensive. That, that was yeah, a really, really thing. good comparison. It's just like, you know, you get, you get funded. It's like they took the, you know, wear the outfit for the job you want or whatever the hell they took that like a hundred times too seriously. And they mm -hmm. were just like, Oh, we're going to fake it till we make it guys. And, and meanwhile, like, however they were managing risk, like it was it, it, one, one, one sit down for two hour session and, and look, looking at their balance sheet, they would have found they were just bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. And, you know, no amount of like, negligence, faking it till you make it, whatever, no amount of getting lost in the sauce, um, I think results in what happened at FTX. I think the only reason that this happened was crime. The only reason FTX blew up was because crimes were committed. Whether they know they were crimes or not, which, you know, it, I'll, I'll tell you as, as, as someone who has to manage balance sheets, and of course not at the scale that they do, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it like there is this level of apprehension, no matter how mundane the transaction, you know, especially on the blockchain where it's like, you know, you have to be a psychopath not to pause and wonder, OK, is this the best thing to do right now without double checking? 
mm-hmm. without doing a test transaction, without doing everything, you know, without making sure security is on point, without thinking, hmm, I wonder how I can improve this process. Like, yeah. you know, if, if you're operating at that scale and not having that apprehension, then you, you need like to just never be in finance ever again. And you for know, sure, if, that's the best case scenario for SBF. Then I think that's good for everyone. I think he just, he just needs to, he should be like, I mean, I don't even know, like he should be rehabilitated, you rehabilitate him and put him on like making, he should just be forced to live in like a shitty house in the suburbs for the rest of his life. And, and he should be on a stipend of like, you know, $55,000 a year. And uh, that should just be his. I know what you're saying, Mikey, but it sounds great. No, we need it, to put it. In, it sounds in the- it sounds great in theory, but I've I've had a better time being very poor and I've had a better time being fairly well off than I've had living in the suburbs on 55k a year <laughs> like I a think, way better time i think we need to put him to work at fidelity in the call center yes uh, dude yes 15 years yes. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever worked if you've ever worked a <laughs> yes. job like that uh you know if you're like oh i can take my series seven in six months the thing is no one takes their series seven in six months because everyone fucking quits because it sucks so bad yeah. working in that call center um yeah. Imagine dude. you call. Imagine you call that call center. And it's just like hello. They need to get us <laughs> on this case, dude. Oh, Fidelity yeah. call center, and he needs to have like a seventy-five minute commute from the suburbs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and thirty minutes. needs to. What we need to. We need to give him like an an irreparable ankle injury, and then <laughs> and then just like let him. We need live a hobble <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that is. Maybe that's like too evil. <laughs>